Well, good morning to you and welcome to another edition of Voice of the Valley. I'm Rick Conkren. Thanks for joining me this morning. And my co-host uh, on my left here, my buddy, and right left arm, actually. Yeah, buddy, we had a good time last week. We did. Richard the Third. Yes, we did. We, we, we said we'd be there, and by golly, we showed up, and they were ready for us to and show it was, up. And uh, it's a great show, uh, the Albans Theater. It's great stuff out there. Rabbi Cohn has joined us here this morning. I appreciate it so much. Larry made this connection and uh, thought, good program coming up that we want to talk about. And we'd like to save you money, too, because... Uh, that's what's going to happen if you listen up here to uh, the program that's coming and you get yourself involved now. I'll tell you in advance, we've got room for about a couple hundred people, but the uh, early registration is already pretty, uh, it's, it's pretty strong. So you're going to want to get on the phone and make your reservation and save yourself about $75 and we'll tell you how to do that. So tell me about the, the program. This is the, this is the Julian James Society and it's going to be a two and a half to almost a three-day program, right? It, it will be three full three days full of reception days. the first night and then three full days of program. Also an optional uh, field trip for those who want to, to uh, take a look at the uh, Lower New River. Probably need to tell folks who Julian James was. Yes, it's co-sponsored by Temple Israel, my congregation, and the Julian James Society, and it's called the Conference on Consciousness and bicameral studies. And those of your listeners who uh, are familiar with Jaynes know that Julian Jaynes was Princeton psychologist uh, who developed this idea of the bicameral mind. And what we're going to focus on in the conference is um, how culture shapes the way in which we think and how the culture, for example, of the Bible is so different from our culture today. And that's why the biblical literature is so fascinating uh, beyond just the content, but also in terms of the way that the biblical writers thought. And you can see changes over the course of the Bible from the older writings to even the more recent ones, even within the framework of the Bible, that show a change in culture and thought and how people think about their own thoughts. You've, uh, you've authored the book, too, this, uh, which is on this, uh, the minds of the Bible, which is it follows, it follows suit, follows the same kind of a uh, diagram of uh, idea. It does. That's the Kindle book that the Julian Jane Society made available just a few weeks ago on Amazon. And the reason I call it the minds of the Bible, plural, not singular, is that uh, looking at different books, you can really get a sense of different mentalities. And uh, the, the biggest difference would be from one of the oldest books, Amos, the prophet, to Ecclesiastes, one of the latest, most recent books. Uh, in, in Amos, uh, the uh, the prophet hears a voice and tells the people what the voice is saying. In Ecclesiastes, he's having a conversation with himself and ruminating uh, about uh, goodness and evil, truth Very and falsehood. Very empirical. I mean, it's extremely, uh, the, the, you're right, the, the difference is night and day. It is night and day. You, you could go to Ecclesiastes and build your philosophy for a lifetime. In Amos, you'd find your laws and your, and your, and your concepts of uh, the why things are black and white. That's right. And, and what happens is culture influences how we function, whether in terms of a voice that's heard or internal conversation with the self. So this would carry over to now. I mean, this is a good example of, of the idea that uh, when we talk about the Bible being uh, right then, right in the middle, and, per and perfectly right now, uh, it doesn't mean you leave out the cultural changes because those cultural changes are proved in the Bible. You can go right from, from Amos to Ecclesiastes and see the influence of cultural change on the prophecy. Absolutely true, and I'm guessing, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that most of your listeners would probably enjoy sitting down with Ecclesiastes and having a cup of coffee more than with Amos. Amen. Yeah. The, the Julian James, his... His theory, which was is very fascinating, was that in the beginning, many you know, thousands of years ago, people the the two sides of the brain worked a little differently because of the culture. And instead of reasoning or have a sense of yourself, you know, like I, ooh, I was arguing with myself. People didn't think that way. Instead, they heard voices that told them things, and then that began to break down at some point. So the Old Testament and earlier and later in the Old Testament of the Bible or, or the New, New Testament of the Talmud, it was a whole different way of kind of consciousness that was caused by culture perhaps. So it, it's fascinating to me to think about. I read the, I read the book, James' book, and I know that uh, Rabbi Jim did too, and it's his whole theory, it, it makes a lot of sense when you, when you go back and look at the, at, at the way things are, are told. 
with Amos versus Ecclesiastes. Well, and that, that's got to be a great balm for how we interpret and look at these scriptures today. Absolutely, and Larry, you've summarized it much better than I could, very concisely and accurately. That's exactly the point. The explanatory power of this idea of the bicameral mind, first of all, it explains why the period of prophecy came to an end. Why did people no longer hear the voice, and why was that a crisis for them? And the other thing that it does is to explain how it is that in the later, most recent books of the Bible, there's this rich inner life of the mind that doesn't seem to uh, to be there in the early years. Incredible. Uh, and you can carry this over to the New Testament as well, because when you when you read the New Testament, you've got three synoptic Gospels, and you have John that seemed to have been out there in a, in a zone all of his own. Uh, that's a great point, and uh, this is why uh, I have learned and teach that the big difference between Judaism and Christianity is not to be found in the Hebrew Scriptures, the Old Testament versus the New Testament. It's to be found in the transformation in human culture Amen. that took place from 3,000 years ago to 2,000 years ago. And that's why the Talmud, which was written pretty much around the same time as the New Testament, bears more in common with the New Testament, in my opinion, than it does with its own scripture, the Old Testament. It's gonna, this is going to be interesting. Well, this, is a know, this could be a show by itself, and maybe we yeah. need to make it that. Well, when he comes back to, to talk, talk about we'll it, that. We'll, we'll give him some more time to talk about this, because it's a fascinating subject, and James's theory is a theory. It can't be proven that, that there was a breakdown physically in the brain or things changed, but we do know that where, you know, it was, was like where once people heard voices, there became a time when they didn't hear those voices anymore. We still have people who hear those voices today, however. Yeah, no, I, okay. they have they have other. I have lots of voices. There are people that hear voices, and they, I mean, audib audibly hear no, voices. Understand. And now it's a, they have a different place in society. It's very, this is fascinating. Well, you know, and back in, no, I don't want to go there. I'm going to save what I'm thinking because it will open up another whole thing. And it, we want to talk when we can talk to this man for a longer time. Yeah, but we need to now but tell let's folks, tell uh, folks to yeah. get involved in the conference yeah. because the conference you, you is can save money. It's June 5th to 8th here in Charleston at Temple Israel. Uh, the registration, uh, early registration, which ends March 17th, is $125 with a discount for students. Uh, it rises from $125 to $200 on March 17th. So if people will go to uh, the website templeisraelwv.org, uh, and if they forget that or they don't type it in correctly, all they have to do is Google Temple Israel, sure. Charleston, West Virginia. Right. Okay, you'll find that conference. You want to sign up as soon as possible. Save yourself. I'm about saving $75, so save yourself $75 and get in there early because you're already interested anyway. If you're listening to this and you're like Larry and I and you're saying, oh, I've got to make this happen. This is going to be a fascinating. I'm going to try to do this, even though it's a, a tough time for me with festival coming up. This subject is so fascinating. Well, I'll take notes for you if you're not there. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to sign up because... If I can't make it all, I want to make as much as I can. This yeah. whole subject matter is just fun. And let me just say, this is not just about religion. We're going no. to have neuroscientists, we're going to have philosophers, linguists, sociologists, and others kind of drawn that. There you go. I see you're holding up that book on quantum physics, right? I just got that because I need, I need help. I, I, cause I've got a quantum mind, you've got a quantum mind, but I think you're, Larry, I'm looking at here, has a better mind for mathematics or this formula. I don't, but I do get the concept. It's funny you, you mentioned that because uh, this is part of the Bertie Cohen Rabbi's Invitational Series, and the first event we had was bringing string theory physicist Brian Green to Charleston. Which was great, too. Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah. I went to see the lecture, yeah. and I came that night you to hear me to that. speak with Rabbi Jim. Fascinating things. If you're a person who enjoys uh, the thought about how we, what our consciousness is and how it's developed, and it's not about religion, although that plays a part sure in it, it does, yeah. but it's about everything. I mean, mm -hmm. this, is, this is fascinating stuff. I hope that there's a, well, you said you already have 60 folks signed up, and hopefully there'll be 200. Right. We're a third to capacity already, so. Get on it. Julian yeah. Jane Society, Conference on Conscious, Consciousness and Bicameral Studies. Very interesting. Uh, you'll be able to get in touch with them at, of course, this This is important. This is your website, temp, uh, templeisraelwv.org, Temple Israel wv.org. Uh, if all else fails, get Temple of Israel in there and make sure you've got the website that has this conference on it. Sign up and be part of it. Three days, you won't be uh, you won't be bored, I'll tell you that. Appreciate you so much, Ro uh, Rabbi Cohen, and we'll get you back, okay? Pleasure. We'll have more time to talk. Yep. More on the way with the Voice of the Valley. We've got